I saw him stride purposely, very purposefully over to the opposition benches and uh, grab the opposition whip. And then I think inadvertently, I don't know for sure because I didn't have enough of an adva- of advantage point to honestly assess it. But I know my colleague Ruth Allen Brasso was pushed into a chair and was uh, in pain and uh, missed the vote. So it was very dis- it was very disturbing to watch that behavior. But back to the issue here, it was about p- closure. The reason we got, I think, a lot of upset, a lot of us upset, was that the government's moving essentially what they call time allocation to limit debate on this bill, on the argument that we must get it done right now. I don't accept that. As a lawyer, I don't accept that the world will come to an end if on June 6 we haven't got it right. We're not going back to this anytime soon. Mm. We've got to get this right. And the Senate is pointing out a whole bunch of other problems with the bill. It's, it, I've, I've tried to very clearly and respectfully say that leading constitutional lawyers believe this is unconstitutional. Why are we wish, pushing through a law that is likely going to be overturned very soon? How do you respond to that, Adam? Look, it's it's when you get into issues of constitutionality and and, and legal opinion, um, you know, it's the old joke. You have as many opinions as lawyers, uh, and there are a lot of lawyers in, in caucus. There are also a lot of doctors in caucus who who are also raising um, competing interests, uh, competing ideas. Uh, from my perspective, the Supreme Court has has asked Parliament to act, and I think we have to respect the court. And I think that that's part of the process we live in. Um, and that's why I think, um, from my perspective, you know, do I think the bill is perfect? I've never seen perfect legislation in my life. Uh, but we have a, a letter we have to get through, a letterbox on a prescribed date. And if we stuff too much in, it won't get in. And if we don't put enough in, we may make the deadline, but we may not meet the test of the Supreme Court. Um, in this context, we're, you know, in this very emotional context, we're trying to do something which is very tough legally. And then we had a week of, it's not just yesterday, a week of, of gamesmanship in the House that I think came to a, to a, a crest yesterday in a very unfortunate way. It should never physical. Well, what do you make of that? I mean, what do you think the Prime Minister's intentions were when he got I mean, out of that look, seat? I'm not going to jump into to his mind or, I mean, it, you know, it's it's... There was brinkmanship all week long. There was an early Monday vote. There have been closures on these bills, denials of unanimous consent on routine matters. It's been a, it's been a very charged political week. And 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 I think that when you uh, get to um, uh, the most sensitive issue of the week, um, it it it's unfortunate and it's un, and it's un, unacceptable that it would spill over onto the floor. But but I think at the end of the day, we have to figure out a way to to, to get this problem working again. And it's 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 collapsed into dysfunction very quickly. And I think the House leaders need to be held to account by all members of the House to try and get these things uh, in a more rational, orderly way through. I mean, yes, we we think we have to be there June 6th. I appreciate the opposition doesn't. Um, I think this is one of those few issues where closure is actually understandable from a perspective that, mm. that if the government thinks it needs to meet a deadline, then the government needs to meet a deadline. On other bills, I think it's, it's I think we've been playing way too many games with them. And I think we need to to find a way. And we we're talking about it outside, about getting committees working, getting the floor of the House of Commons um, back to to a functional state, and that's what we have to get to with with without getting lost in what happened yesterday. Aaron, do you think all this has been blown out of proportion, or do you think it's a, a symptom of a bigger problem? No, I think, you know, I was very disappointed. You know, the, the Prime Minister has to be held to a different standard. It's the, the person that uh, is the leader of the government, but also represents Canada. And um, there is, has been a lot of pressure this week. This, these are emotional issues, but this is where, as a leader, you have to be able to not allow your emotions to get the better of you. And uh, when you wade in angrily into something like this, there's obviously risk that, you know, things could happen, things could be said. And I think the Prime Minister needed to make sure he didn't let his anger get the better of him. And yesterday he did. Mm-hmm. And uh, so... Can you understand why he did? Um, no, actually, because this, you know, there was nothing um, sinister going on in the House. There were people not in their seats uh, quickly for I think a Adam disagrees with you on and that. And I think I mean, the Prime Minister right. should not be going over and pushing people Agreed. into their seats, right? Um, but you shouldn't be blocking <clears throat> a vote physically either, right? Well, I'm not sure people, that's what happened. Yeah, yeah, people were taking their seats, and I think the speaker was just starting to really ask people to 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 take their seats. We've seen slow voting in the House of Commons before. We've seen we've seen passions, and you know there should be passions in that house, but we should have respect for every single member, and that's yeah. and physical violence is just simply not permitted. Period. But the, the NDP has also been accused of blowing this out of proportion as well. And Tom Mulcair got quite angry himself. Well, I can understand why. 
he was concerned because one of our colleagues, a young woman, was pushed into a chair. Whether that was deliberate or not, the point is it happened. It should never have happened. Physical violence is not allowed in the House of Commons, period. Yeah, I'm not going to excuse the inexcusable. And and what happened yesterday should not have happened. I think the apologies are on the record because they, they needed to be apolog- the actions need to be apologized for. But I've never been in the House when... You can literally on the video see the whip trying to get through and everyone laughing that they're not letting him through. I, I get it. It's it's a stunt. But but surely to goodness, mm-hmm. um, passive aggressive behavior is, that's vile, that's physical is no better than, than aggressive behavior that's physical. 